All right, this set of notes deals with refraction, um, also known as the bending of light. And we will see that this occurs when light goes from one material to another. Right? The reason why um, light will even bend has to do with the fact that the speed of light is different in different media. All right, so here's a kind of a, a list of a few different mediums. Um, light will slow down compared to a vacuum. You can see here that air is a little bit less, uh, water is much less, and glass is even uh, slower. All right, speed of light in a vacuum, as we previously learned, is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Essentially the same uh, in air, but m appreciably slower in those other materials. Uh, we'll see that uh, another material, diamond, is very, very slow compared um, to the few that are on this page. Right. Now, why that has anything to do with refraction? If you look at a light ray um, going from one medium to another, right, you can kind of visualize it as a lawnmower or car uh, where there's wheels on each side of the light beam. Right. Here we're going from sidewalk or concrete to grass. Grass is a relatively slow material. The wheels will not roll very easily in it. So when this light ray approaches the interface, this one wheel here will hit the grass earlier. It will slow down. So if we have one wheel going slowly and the other wheel going quickly, that will cause the lawnmower to bend inward. And when I say inward, towards the normal line. So notice this dashed line here is drawn perpendicular to the interface between the two different materials, okay, at the point at which the light crosses from one side to the other, right? If these two materials were reversed, right, the opposite thing would happen. The lawnmower would curve away from the normal line as opposed to towards it. Okay, so here's an example uh, using a glass uh, rectangular block, kind of like you did in the inquiry activity. If we had a beam of light trying to enter the glass, and we draw our normal line there, when it gets to the glass, right, it's going to slow down. And if that light ray slows down, it will bend towards the normal line. So notice it swings inward towards that normal, right? Some terminology again, here's our angle of incidence. This angle down here, right, drawn from the refracted beam to the normal line is called our angle of refraction. And then if we were to look at the second interface as the light tries to escape the glass, we would redraw a normal line. And if we're going from a slow material of glass to a faster material such as air, the beam will then bend away from the normal line. Okay, so notice it swings um, away from this normal over to here. Okay. Um, you could kind of call that an unrefracted beam. Uh, if you really look at this red beam here, uh, for this situation with a perfect rectangle, this winds up being parallel to this incoming one. Might not be the scale on this PowerPoint, but that would, uh, that's what would happen with a rectangular glass block. Okay, so some observations, kind of mentioned them already. All right, you need that normal line, which is perpendicular to the surface or the interface between the two materials. That allows you to measure angles of incidence as well as refraction. Uh, whenever a ray goes into a slower material, it will bend towards the normal. And if it happens to enter a faster material, it will bend away from the normal line. Notice I'm never saying left, right, up, or down. Um, it kind of depends upon the geometry of the material you're going into. So it really has to do with that normal line and the light ray, um, how it's swinging either towards it or away from it. All right, for different cases, that could be left, right, up, or down. All right, so I'm really highlighting the words towards and away, and that's what I want you to remember uh, rather than actual directions. Okay. Now, the amount of bending depends upon how slow the material become or how slow light becomes as it enters a material. 
Um, if something is very, very slow, it will have what's called a higher index of refraction. Uh, this index of refraction is given the variable n. Um, so here are some typical values. Notice air is 1. So that's saying that air really doesn't slow light down at all compared to a vacuum. Water, on the other hand, is slower, and it's 1.33. Uh, glass is one and a half. Diamond is well over two. And what this means is that glass, for instance, slows down light by one and a half times when compared to the speed of light in a vacuum. All right? So this leads us to a little bit of a, a formula here, all right? where the index of refraction is just a ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum, which is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second, to the speed of that same light in the medium, okay? Notice that index of refraction does not have any units, all right, because it's a speed divided by a speed. So we'd have meters per second over meters per second. They cancel. This is just a number, okay? Uh, Snell's law is a quantitative relationship that allows you to figure out how much a light ray bends. And based upon what we've just gone through, it obviously depends upon the indices of refraction of the two materials, okay? Uh, these angles here, theta one and theta two, refer to the incident light ray, all right? So this would be the angle of incidence. Theta two would be the angle of refraction. All right, N1 refers to the material in which the light ray is in, and then number two here would refer to the material that it's entering. All right, so this is where the bending occurs. All right, for most of our problems, we're just going to look at air versus another material. So if it's air, the index of refraction of air is one. So then this formula becomes a little bit easier because one times anything is itself. So as an example, if we had light um, going from air to water, right, and it came in with an angle of incidence of 40 degrees, question is what will the beam do once it enters the water? If you use Snell's law here, right, the first material here is air. So the index of refraction of air is 1. The angle in which it's uh, entering is 40 degrees, right? The index of refraction of water is roughly 1.33. So notice we know everything here except for the refracted angle. So if we just plugged in sine of 40 degrees into our calculator and divided by 1.33, we would get the number 0.483, equaling the sine of our refracted angle. You would have to put the sine of negative 1 0.483 into your calculator, which is the inverse sine. Most of you have already done this, right, if you had geometry last year. If you're taking geometry now, you're probably doing this as we speak, and that angle then would be 28.8 degrees. The fact that that angle is less than 40 tells us that this light right here, the red one, is swinging towards the normal line because this angle where the question mark is is less than 40. Okay, if we somehow got an angle here where the, it was greater than 40, that would be evidence that the angle uh, or the light ray swung away from the normal line. But that would only happen if the light ray got faster. And in this case, the light ray got slower. Okay. Um, some uh, away from the math here for a little bit. All right, you guys have probably been at the pool at some point looking at objects beneath the water try to grab them and they're not where you think they are, that has to do with the fact that the light coming off the objects, right, when it goes from water to air, swings away from the normal line. And your eyes see this light and kind of backtrace it along a line and you think things are higher in the water than they actually are, all right? So it can start to play tricks on your mind and refraction is the cause, okay? Um, the speed of light in a medium sometimes depends a little bit on the frequency of light that you have, right? All light travels at 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second in a vacuum, but different frequencies of light will slow down to different amounts um, depending upon what color you have. And this is the reason why we can see all the colors once light refracts through a prism, 
okay? Because violet light gets bent more than red does. And that will give us, you know, uh, this yeah, famous Pink Floyd album cover, right? Some of these Pink Floyd album covers are scientifically incorrect, all right? This would be a correct prism up here where violet light bends a lot, red just a little bit as it enters this prism and also exit the prism. So you get your full rainbow over here. Okay. Rainbows, you guys have asked about this before, um, occurs when water droplets in the air um, also refract the white light, but the red and violet bend to different amounts. A lot of times they'll reflect off the backside of a droplet um, and that's why you sometimes get double rainbows because you'll get a double reflection off the backside um, and then your light eventually gets out and it comes out in two different places, hence two rainbows. Uh, you guys should have seen this in the inquiry activity, right? If we were to take light and shine it from a slow material to a fast material, it'll bend away from the normal. And if you increase this incident angle, you're going to start increasing the refracted angle. And you will eventually get to a point where the refracted angle is right, around, right along 90 degrees, and it bounces back within the slow material. Um, this is referred to as total internal reflection. And this angle that produces this phenomenon is referred to as the critical angle. That critical angle um, depends upon the two materials that you have, all right? Um, in the case of air and water, happens to be 48 degrees. Uh, for air and even slower materials, glass and diamond, this critical angle is less. Um, that's why a diamond looks so brilliant, because most of the light cannot escape it because it's such a slow material. I believe the critical angle for diamond and air is roughly 20 degrees or so. Okay, We watched the uh, video on fiber optics um, at the beginning of this unit, um, and that's this idea of total internal reflection is the whole basis of fiber optics, that you can guide a light beam down a flexible uh, piece of glass. All right, so many uh, communications as well as medical um, applications to this idea of total internal reflection. Right. You're going to start working on a practice packet with uh, refraction here. If you wanted to read up on this in your textbook at all, it is on pages 492 through 504.